My friend Jill has created shoes I wish I had when my kids were littles. Kiss and Toe shoes are not only stylish and practical, but each pair is designed to help your kids put their shoe on the right foot all by themselves. All they have to do is make sure the adorable woodland foxes embroidered on each shoe are kissing when the shoes meet. These shoes save time, they teach independence, and they cultivate self-confidence in kids. Not only that, but with every pair sold, Kiss and Toes donates a portion of their proceeds to support families who are in the process of adoption. This is a product and a company that Hey Girl is honored to support. From now until Christmas Day, you can get 15% off your purchase from Kiss and Toes by using the promo code HeyGirlPod at checkout. 15% off, y'all. That is the biggest discount they've offered since their launch. So what are you waiting for? Go to kissandtoes.com. That's K-I-S-S-I-N-T-O-E-S. Dot com kissandtoes.com make sure you use the promo code hey girl pod get your 15% off go order some of these adorable shoes shoes for your neighbors shoes for your nieces and nephews shoes for all of the kids and don't forget to use the promo code hey girl pod and get your 15% off Hey girls, and welcome to season four of the Hey Girl podcast. I'm your host, Bethany Needham. This season, we get to hear stories of faithfulness from stay-at-home mamas, business entrepreneurs, some amazing single ladies, your dearest friends, and your favorite authors. We hope these stories will continue to encourage you to run your race in your place. For more information and to connect with us, go find us on Instagram and Facebook. We're at Hey Girl Pod, or you can join our email list through my website, bethanyneedham.com. As always, thanks for listening. If it weren't for you, I would literally be a crazy person talking to myself in a microphone. But thanks to your listening and sharing this podcast, I get to be a crazy person talking to you through a microphone. So grab a cup of coffee or a cold can of seltzer and let's get this episode started. Hey girls, and welcome to another episode of the Hey Girl Podcast. Oh my goodness, you need to buckle up because this week we have such an incredible guest. Guys, y'all know that I love nominated guest weeks because these are people most times, not 100%, but most times people that I have not met in some of them, the first time I ever hear their name is when somebody sends in a nomination. And so Mary Fry, I did not know her story previous to this, had not checked out her Instagram or the YouTube channel, all of these things, but I got an email from just one of our listeners and was like, listen, this is somebody that you need to check out. You absolutely should have her come on and share her story. And so we went ahead and reached out and I don't even like, I literally don't have words. First of all, even just like getting the schedule set, this has been such a crazy season of recording with moving and everything else, but we were able to make it happen, sat down with Mary and she's one of these people that you just instantly, there's like literally this moment where you're like, this young woman is just so, so special. Like there's something about her. It's like what all of us hope is true of us, right? Like that the Holy Spirit is so much alive and at work in this person that you just immediately can tell. And that is Mary. I'll share more after the episode because I definitely want you to go check out all of her channels, her YouTube or Instagram. But I'm just saying right now that you should probably grab a tissue, but also just prepare to be so blessed and encouraged by her story because I'll be honest, I the day that I did the interview, I was feeling pretty tired even going into it. I came out so energized 
and encouraged and amped up from talking to her, from hearing her story. And I know that you're going to feel the same. So before we get to it, now that I got you all ready for it, I want to pause and I'm going to share a listener review because I love them and they're so encouraging. And I hope that this encourages you if you haven't gotten the chance to reach out, to take the time to reach out because it does mean so much. But over on the Facebook, the book of faces, we heard from Jenna Jenna, thank you so much for writing in. And she said, the Hey Girl podcast has been a godsend. God has used and continued to use the truths I hear from the hosts and their guests to take steps forward in my faith walk. I will be forever grateful for this ministry. Thank you. Oh my goodness, Jenna, you're speaking my language. Just that taking steps forward as we pray in this ministry, that Hey Girl would be something that encourages every listener to run their race in their place, we know that that literally is one step at a time. So I loved that you even just articulated that this is something that's encouraging you in those steps in your faith. So Jenna, thank you for taking the time to write. Thank you for listening. You just, we appreciate you so much. All right. I don't know if you guys are ready for this, but like you should be because it's going to be the best thing ever without further ado y'all i want to introduce you to our guest our nominated guest today miss mary frack so mary fry you are a nominated guest this is awesome. <laughs> and I, I know I that just, I'm, I'm so curious who nominated me. This is so cool. I know. And I'm the worst because I'm like, uh, they're going to have to let you know. But basically, <laughs> if for some crazy reason we have a listener for the first time, I'll just give a quick nominated guess means that somebody, Miss Mary, that's in your life or at least has a view into your life, has seen how you're living, how you're walking in your journey, and has been inspired by your faith and all of it, and by you're just chasing after God and running your race in your place. And, and it meant so much to them that they sent us your name and said, listen, you need to interview this woman. People <laughs> need to hear her story. And so because of that, nominated guests are some of my favorite because they're people that I wouldn't necessarily know otherwise. And then I get to sit with you, not only to hear your story, but I feel like the greatest gift of stewardship that I get to share it with our listeners, that they get to hear your story. So I'm honored to be here. So thank you. Oh, I'm so glad. So why don't you take a couple of minutes and just introduce yourself for obviously there's at least one guest out there that's listening. That's like, yay, (laughs) she's on. But for those who may not know you, tell it. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay. So I'm Mary Fry. I'm 30 years old. Although I guess people say I look more like 18 years old, but It's funny, as I get older and older, people are more and more shocked at how old I am. My husband and I grew up in the same church and started dating in high school, dated through college, and got married right after college. And we will be celebrating nine years of marriage in January. My husband went to seminary right after we got married. And then our journey took us a lot of different places. And we moved to Scotland for a few months, back to the Boston area. We grew up in Maryland. We went to Chicago for undergrad. We've been all around. And through our journey, we've learned a lot of things moving all around. But it's our journey. And there's a lot of ups and downs in it. And I wouldn't trade it for anything. I love that you were saying that people think that you're younger (laughs) or... I have the hardest time on Zoom call guessing ages. Like this is a legitimate issue of mine. I don't know what it (laughs) is that I'm like, I I don't know. And so uh, I would say that I was going to put you a little bit, a little bit younger than 30. So yeah, (laughs) well done on the skin regimen. (laughs) Oh, (laughs) Um, so I guess another important fact about my life is I was born with cystic fibrosis. It's a genetic lung disease. And 
I don't know if that's why I look younger. I don't know, but that is part of our story. And it has made our journey a little bit unique in some ways. Also along the journey, my husband and I started sharing our story online. It actually started when we went to Scotland. We were gonna miss our families and friends. And so we said, don't worry, we are gonna make you a video every single day so you'll feel like we aren't far away and they said you're crazy <laughs> um but we started making these daily videos and it's been about six years and here we are uh it went from our friends and family watching to a few hundred to a few thousand and we're at a quarter of a million people who um, watch our videos and it's something we never even knew to dream or pray or hope for but this is what God's given us, and this is what we are trying to be faithful in each day. All right. I'm super excited to get to that part. Let me first, I want to rewind this a little bit because you obviously talked about this is God's place this in your life. You obviously have a personal faith, and yes. I know that the person who nominated you, that's something that's really stood out to them. Hmm. When did your own relationship would Jesus start? Like, what did that look like? I had the privilege of growing up in a family where my parents modeled for me what it looked like to trust Jesus in every aspect of life with health, health stuff. I mean, we had a lot of scary stuff going on and just with everyday life decisions. And so I had that modeled to me and I put my faith in Jesus at a young age. And as I look back on my childhood, I think when I got to around 14 years old was when I was really learning, what does it look like to walk by faith? And this isn't just a head thing. This is a everyday um, journey. And so I think around age 14 was when God really gripped my heart in a way that it became mine. And I remember a nurse at camp asked me, Mary, how does having CF affect your relationship with Jesus? And I was just like, oh, it's fine, no big deal. And I really, that, that was it. That was the extent of my answer at that time, but it got me thinking. And it was during that summer that John chapter nine took a really big, uh, it took, the reality of having CF to a deeper level for me personally. So John 9, in John 9, there's a blind man and Jesus' disciples looked at Jesus and said, why is this guy born blind? Was it because of his sin or his parents' sin? And Jesus said, no, this is so that the glory of God can be revealed in his life. And I thought, wow. It was that moment of God has a purpose in all of this. And that was, I think during that summer, I was, God was starting to solidify what he's doing in my life, not in spite of CF, but in the midst of it. Hmm. So for people, and I am like partially aware of CF and what, what that entails, but maybe just for a moment for people who may, they've heard they've heard of it, but what does that look like in terms of, cause you said you were born with this, right? What are the challenges that that brings just, I mean, physically and to your right. health as a child? Right. So CF is mainly known as a lung disease, but it really affects every part of the body. The biggest daily challenges that you'll find in a CF body. Um, my sister and I both have cystic fibrosis. She's two years older than me. Lots of coughing. So our lungs make too much mucus and it is thick and sticky and the perfect place for bacteria. So our lungs are uh, just constantly fighting a chronic infection. And so that's a lot of coughing and I guess drowning in your, in your lungs are drowning in mucus and fighting that constant infection brings fevers and exhaustion. Um, so our lungs decline and function less and less as we get older. It's a progressive disease. And then also um, the pancreas doesn't work right. So that helps digest nutrients and that sort of thing. 
And so we are often malnourished um, because our bodies have trouble digesting and absorbing nutrients. So your body is just in this constant cycle of fighting that infection. And it's kind of a weakening, weakening as you get older. Um, so lots of coughing that sums up. Yeah. Are there but a lot of medications? Yeah. Yes. Perfect. Airway clearance every day, which is me strapping on this inflatable vest, which literally shakes the mucus out of me. Um, that's for an hour in the morning and an hour at night. Lots of nebulized medications, inhaled medications, and then lots of pills. Um, I take about 30 to 40, just the pancreatic enzymes alone every day. Wow. Seven with every meal and five with every snack. So every time I put something in my mouth, I have to take pills to digest it. And then lots of pills on top of that, antibiotics and pills for my liver and pills for everything. So lots of pills. And then every couple of months, my infection kind of flares up and I need IV antibiotics. So sometimes that means going in the hospital for a few weeks. So lots of pills, lots of doctors, lots of hospital visits. Yeah. And for some reason, I was literally expecting you to say for a few days, but a few weeks is not a short stint in a hospital. I would agree with that. (laughs) How many times um, over the course of your childhood, or maybe you've lost count, would you say that you had to go, that it went to that place where you had to go into the hospital? My disease progressed starting, I mean, it progressed my whole life, but when I turned 11 was when I was first put in the hospital and put on IVs. And it was about once a year um, when I was 11, 12, 13. And then through high school, it was once or twice a year. Through college, it was two times a year. And then uh, the last few years has been every couple of months that I'm needing IV antibiotics. Hmm. So then you were saying as a teenager, you've, you know, walked this journey and I thought it was powerful. Somebody asked a question that for you in the moment didn't necessarily resonate like, oh, it's Mm -hmm. fine. But how God used that question to kind of stir in you and then speaking through his word of that God would be glorified. Mm -hmm. So as a teenage girl, tell me, what did that look like practically in terms of did it did it change even your response to say like hospitalization or just the daily routine of walking through this sickness or what shifted for you? That's a good question. I I feel like that'd be a great question for my parents. (laughs) Um, That's true, right? We very rarely remember. (laughs) (laughs) Maybe they saw a shift, but no, I think that a lot of it was just God helping shape how I think about my circumstances, Hmm. that it's not this, oh, this horrible life that's been thrown onto me, but that this is what God's calling me to, to walk with faith in the midst of daily challenges. And, and I really think that my whole life, he was preparing me for that. And, and then when I was a teenager, really coming to grips with those questions of what does it mean to walk with faith in the midst of CF? And it'll lead later in the story to when God was calling me. So he had prepared my heart and prepared my mind to think of CF not as a hindrance to my story, but just part of my story. So let's see, I was 14 when I discovered the truth of John 9. And then just four years later, when God started calling me to share my story in new and exciting ways and terrifying ways. And I can go into that now. I was going to say, do tell. (laughs) Do tell. So the week I turned 18, I moved to Chicago, so 13 hours away to go to Moody Bible Institute. And as a freshman, I remember sitting at my desk in my dorm room and I felt God saying to me, hey, when you're asked to share your story, share your story. And I just said, okay, like in my heart, I said, okay. And a a week later at church, the one of the pastors asked, hey, Mary, would you be willing to share your life story on Sunday? And I said, yes. And after I said, yes, I said, what did I just agree to? (laughs) And so then 
when I shared my story, it was, I don't know, two or 3,000 people there at that church. And it was terrifying. And it was amazing because that was one of the things that God used to help me learn how to share my story. It's interesting. Uh, I missed one important part of the story. That first year in college, at our Sunday morning um, college ministry, part of the church, the college pastor said, okay, and at this time, we're going to take a break, turn to the people around you and tell three minutes of your life story. So I turned to the people next to me and I said, I'm Mary, I was homeschooled, I love college, here we are, the end. And my now husband, but then my boyfriend said, and, and, and I was like, and I have cystic fibrosis. And it was interesting to me looking back that I didn't think CF was that notable to put into my story that three minutes. And later, I think Peter and I talked about it and Peter was like, this is a huge part of your story, Mary. And I was like, well, I guess you're right. And that, that was where it really started, where I realized and recognized that God can work huge things in the midst of seemingly non-ideal. Mm. It's not ideal that I have CF. It's, it sometimes feels like a hindrance to what I feel like I should be doing or whatever. But through all of these little scenarios, they add up to now I'm 30 years old and I proclaim boldly that God does work hmm. in the midst. And it's obviously hard and like you can hear I'm crying, but it's good tears. It's tears of victory after 30 years of fighting that God is still at work. Hmm. Amen. What a crazy, like looking from the outside and you describing just the daily, like what this is on a daily basis, but for you in that moment, like turning to these people, like in your mind, this isn't, this is not an important part of my story. Right. Almost like we tuck that away, but for your, as you said, now husband looking from the outside to you and being like, no, you're missing something here. Yeah. And I've said said this, I want to say when I've talked to students before, but when you think about like a fruit tree and how, you know, scripture talks a lot about when we bear fruit in mm -hmm. our lives. And I sometimes get really dumb images in my brain. Like I just, it's the way that God <laughs> speaks to me and it's, it works for me, but I always think other people are like, uh, you probably need more therapy, but <laughs> I've always don't thought, we all? I know, right? That in terms of a fruit tree, like, I don't know that the tree can see its fruit when it looks out, even if it's covered in it, that it needs somebody looking from the outside in to see these things and not just see them, but to call them out. Right. And I just like, again, had that image as you're talking about <clears throat> your boyfriend at the time being like, no, I, this is notable. This is important. And you need to share right. it and how God has used that even now right. in your life. So obviously you married this boyfriend. We did, <laughs> yes. And he still makes my heart skip a beat. Oh, I love that. <laughs> so cute. But you've, you've had more and more opportunities, more than even necessarily turn to your neighbor and share your story. Tell me, just some of these moments in along the way in terms of how God has used this, not just in your own life, like mm. personally to kind of draw you to himself, but use the story to be able to share it with other people right. to talk about it. Yeah. Like I said, this whole YouTube thing, this whole sharing online thing was not something we imagined. It yeah. just kind of happened. And it's been interesting to look back on my life and say, oh, wow, there were a lot of things that God used to prepare me for this very task he's put in front of us. Mm -hmm. So when we share in our videos, it has morphed over the years. It's become very evident that the viewers are most interested in my health journey. They want to know what it looks like to live with cystic fibrosis. What's it like to be married and have cystic fibrosis? All of these kinds of questions. So our videos have taken mostly the angle of CF awareness or yeah, just 
daily life with CF, the monotony of it. I mean, we are, we're not doing exciting things every day. We're doing life. And I think a lot of people find camaraderie in that, like, oh, her life isn't perfect either. Or, oh, look, she has daily struggles as well. I know that feeling, even though most of the people who watch us don't have CF, but just in life, we all have those things that are hard. Yeah. So as we started sharing our story online and people started watching and asking questions, and I guess it just became clear that God was like, hey, here's a platform. I'm asking you to do something here. And sometimes it's fun and sometimes it's terrifying and I'm going to be with you. So let's do it. And he's grown it to what it is today. And we try to be faithful with that. There's a song that we love listening to. We love like one of the ways we blast truth into our minds. And this happens on the way to the hospital. This happens on the way to church. This happens whenever we're in the car. We put on some worship music and just blast it and put the truth into our minds. There's a song that we've sung a lot over the years. It's by John Guerra. And the song is Rolling, Rolling, Rolling. And the, the lyrics sum up what my hope is for our videos. It says, let me tell you now a story. It is mine and all I know. I could tell you now the details, but it's better when it's shown. And we could sit down and we could film a video and we could say, I was born, I put my faith in Jesus, every single day is hard, we pray through the hard things, let's ask God to help us in each struggle. We could, we could really detail it out, we could do that. But what we feel God's called us to is to show it, hmm. is to live the gospel. And when the opportunities come and when people come asking questions, tell me about this hope that you have. I hear you mention Jesus, can you tell me who that is? And we, and then we tell them and, and some videos we are more explicit in, the, in faith and we explain it. And, and some videos it's more just showing, it's hmm. just showing what it looks like to walk with Jesus through hard things. But I love that. I could tell you all the details, but it's better when it's shown. You mentioned in going into this, that there were going to be the things that were fun and the things that were really scary. Mm-hmm. Give me, give me a couple of examples from, cause you have obviously stepped into something and it's amazing to me how many stories I get to hear that are like this. I didn't even know what we were starting necessarily that this is where it would end up, right. but you did, you stepped into it. So yeah. what have been the things that have been really fun? And then what have been the things that have been really scary? It's interesting to look back at videos from six years ago and see where we were then, see, you know, like our apartment in Scotland and what it was like to walk down the street in Scotland and hear the bagpipes. And those things are fun. It's fun to look back on. It's fun to make memories. It's fun to make silly videos that make us laugh in the moment or six years later. These are fun side effects of having these daily videos. The hard things are being vulnerable and putting health information out there and putting our emotions on the line and, and showing what it's like to walk through hard things. It's annoying sometimes when you can't tell everybody all the details. And so they make assumptions about your life. After seeing a 10 minute video, they make assumptions about your life and your decisions. And that's annoying, but it's inevitable. It, mm. We're putting 10 minutes out there and it doesn't summarize our whole 24 hours. So they make assumptions and there's no way to get around that. You touched on something that has actually come up in conversation recently with some, a couple of friends of mine who for different reasons, and they have different platforms, but they, God has called them and given them these public platforms they have each of them at different levels have faced the frustrations that come when <laughs> you are put, you know, you're kind of putting yourself out there and mm -hmm. social media, whether that's Instagram, whether it's YouTube, whether it's Facebook, whatever it is, it's a very curious thing. Like, I think there's so many things that are amazing about it in terms of you mentioned the amount of people that have watched your videos. Like if you stop to think, 
gosh, I don't know if at any point in my life I will ever stand up in front of this many people, like in one physical place. But Oof. because <laughs> of technology, I get the opportunity to live this life, to, to show people my right. journey, my faith in numbers that probably you don't want to think about. At least that's how I always think when I'm recording. Yeah. I don't want to think about <laughs> the people that will listen. The challenge to that is, uh, and this is where it gets kind of hard and weird, is you really can't put everything, like, and not yeah. to say that you're hiding things, but like they're only getting these little like snapshots. Yep. When it's in writing, they're not even getting tone all the time. Like there's all of these other pieces, but then people are, now they have the free, you've put yourself out there. Now they have this open start giving their opinions and their feedback suggestions suggestions ever so helpful (laughs) and I think some of it can be really good you can I mean there's some things that come in you're like wow that was super helpful but then there are those things that are like how do you handle that in a public arena where you know we've chosen it. We, you know, we put ourselves out there, but now, oh my goodness, this person, I don't even know if they were well-meaning, like they just right. come at. So yeah. for you, how have you walked that? Cause I think that is scary. Yeah, it um, is. And I would imagine that there'd be the temptation to, okay, let's shut this thing down. <laughs> like, Oh yeah. Let's well, just go back to our family here. Let's yeah, cut out the I've naysayers. I definitely said, oh, there are days that I want to throw the camera across the room. Like, oh, I get that. I get that once a week that I want to throw the camera across the room um, and just be done with it. But have you done it yet? <laughs> no. <laughs> Maybe that would be a good thing. We don't have the budget thing. for that. <laughs> no. <laughs> but I I come back to if God is calling me to this, he will equip me for it. Mm. And and a lot of times that's equip me to handle whatever I see on that screen, whatever those comments say, and also put safeguards up for myself that I'm not just gonna, if I'm feeling super vulnerable, um, I'm not just gonna sit there and read all of those kinds of comments. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna surround myself with people who remind me why I do what I do. And it's amazing how on those days where I feel like, is this worth it? am I doing the right thing by sharing my story? I get an email or a message from somebody saying, I have lost hope and you reminded me that God is still there. Hmm. Or I'm surrounded by sadness. And when I saw the light of Jesus in your video, it reminded me that I can talk to God or those, those are the reason. That's the reason I do what I do. Hmm. Girl, you're speaking my language in terms (laughs) of, I'm just thinking of the amount of times that I have thought about throwing the podcast mic across the room and just in frustration of just being like, I cannot, I can't do this anymore. And God just know, like, God is so gracious with us. And oftentimes it comes through people who in what they're doing is really expressing gratitude, but in their gratitude are those, like I was called the key words that remind us why, like why we do what we do. And they may not even have meant to be this, Hey, just a reminder this is, but how God uses that to remind us that, yeah, with, you know, the great reward that we're experiencing, there's risk in that. Yeah. And we don't come out completely unscathed or, and we're also never, we're not going to do it perfectly. I think that's part of the, none of us live life perfectly, but those who choose to, to do these things from a platform where more people have a view in, it's not Mm -hmm. that other people are doing it more perfect than us. It's that you just all get you happen to get to see my mistakes, <laughs> like here right. they are, yeah. Because um, you don't get to hide them anymore, and there's beauty in that. But then again, unfortunately, there's hurt that comes with that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so and how- one of the things that I've just had to focus and grab onto is 
I find my worth, my identity, my purpose in Christ, Hmm. not in the response to the videos, not in the performance of the videos, in Christ alone. Yeah. And if God's calling me to this, he will help me accomplish what he's calling me to. Hmm. Man, if we could all hold on to that in everything we do, right? Just that mm-hmm. we're our actual identity versus my husband gives a really great uh, message that he's done the different or really differentiating between assignment and calling and oh. this idea. And I would tag to that how often we tie up our identity in our assignment and mm-hmm. we lose, we kind of lose this reality of who I am is is not what I do. Like oftentimes right. what I do kind of pours from that place, but it doesn't define who I am. Yeah. And it just helps us hold things loosely, like loosely, as yeah. we should. Yeah, God, this right. is yours. I'm just stewarding. <laughs> and actually to that point, it's so important to remember that, especially within the chronic illness community, because there are so many days where my health restricts me from doing what I want to do that Mm. performance. And on the days where you can do nothing but wake up and sit in bed and breathe, if breathing is all you did today, your identity is still in Christ. It's not in what you did or didn't do. Mm. And, And so I think being forced to reconcile that in my own mind, my, my worth is not in what I do because I've had to grapple with that because of having CF. It's also helped me within being a vlogger or a social media person, my worth is not in my performance. It's in Mm. Christ alone. It's, It's such a good word. Tell me, Mary, we talked about your childhood yeah. Uh, with CF, you're 30 years old now, you're married. Yeah. Um, obviously you do have the, these videos and we'll definitely point people to go check those out. But what is life for those people who are thinking through, what is the reality of CF for you now in your adult right. years? Because as you said, this is something that is, that is changing as you get older, Right. Um, the nature of it. So what does it look like now? Well, this is an interesting question because about 12 weeks ago, I started a new medication, a groundbreaking medication. Before I started that medication, I was a 30-year-old or 29-year-old who was experiencing progressive lung disease where walking to the kitchen to get a glass of water ended in a coughing attack, Hmm. which these coughing attacks, that would happen from the moment my eyelids opened in the morning to the moment I went to sleep, um, any kind of activity like standing up or walking to the car, those sorts of things would instigate these coughing attacks. It consumed all of my energy for the day. Mm -hmm. And so going to Target was like a huge victory. Um, And that was the majority of my day for those 29 years. well, specifically the last maybe four years of decline and lots of IV antibiotics and lots of side effects from those IV antibiotics and just constant, every waking moment was trying to manage and make the most of what each day looked like. Mm. And that's the same, trying to make the most of what each day looks like. But in the last 12 weeks, that has completely changed the way my days look. Basically, this medication helps at a cellular level to help the protein that's mutated work better. So my lungs are not drowning in mucus as much as they were. And so those coughing attacks are so much less. Hmm. I don't dread that moment of waking up anymore because it doesn't start with a coughing attack. It's been life-changing. So in May, I actually came to North Carolina for a double lung and liver transplant evaluation, which is a very last resort option for people with with CF. It's not a cure. It's more of like a time buyer. It's kind of been known as trading one disease for another. Lung transplant isn't an option for everybody, and we needed to 
figure out if it was even an option for me because I also have liver disease, which is very rare. So we came to Duke Hospital and we were living in Boston, but we came to Duke to be evaluated. And they said, you do need a liver transplant whenever you have a lung transplant because that was where my body was at. And through that whole week of evaluation, we kept saying, but our hope is that this new medication is going to come out. And they said, yes, we hope so too. And, and it was kind of like, yes, we do hope that. We have no idea if it'll work for my body. So then a few months ago, maybe two or three months after the evaluation, I started that medication and within days we saw benefits because as you can imagine, once it's fixing that at a cellular level, it's, it helps pretty quickly. And I started seeing improvements and here we are three months later and I'm doing great. Wow. Um, I didn't recover all of my lung function or anything. I'm still functioning at a lower lung function, but I can do a lot with a little bit of lung function when I'm not coughing my brains out every second of the day. So the question about lung transplant, lung and liver transplant for me is now we're able to kind of push that out further. And our hope is that this medication will give us years before I'll need a transplant. But in the meantime, we moved to North Carolina and we're here and ready for whenever that transplant time does come. But in the meantime, we're enjoying and making the most of every day with our new normal, as I call it. And thankful for that. So thankful. So give me like, cause you talk about making the best of, cause honestly this, the reality that you're describing, never mind the before, even the now isn't necessarily what everybody faces every single day. Right. Who's not living with some type of chronic illness. Mm -hmm. What does making the best of every day look like? Because you you even mentioned it in doing videos every day, these types of things. It shows the mundane of right. sometimes, in fact, most of life is the mundane lived between right. these kind of big moments. So yeah. what does that look like for you right now? Like what does this running your race look like right now? Yeah. Embracing my new normal it means I get a lot more housework done because, and I love it. I'm like, I can do laundry. This is so fun. And, and I'm okay with the fact that that sounds really mundane for me. That's a huge victory. Hmm. So one of the things that we like to do is celebrate the little things. So even if that's like a whole day at the hospital, there might be something that makes us laugh and, that's awesome. Like laughter is so fun and it can be had in the middle of less than ideal scenarios. Mm. Embracing the joy of a really fun interaction with a friend or acquaintance. Those are things to celebrate. Making the most of, okay, maybe I don't feel great and we can't go sit at a nice restaurant and have dinner, but we can eat Chick-fil-A in the parking lot and like sit in our car and that's fun <laughs> yes. to us. Make the most of it. Just getting out of the house is a fun, that's worth celebrating. We went to an animal sanctuary and I fed a camel. Okay. So you're talking about celebrating yes. the little things, which... I, we had a guest earlier this uh, season, Jess Dodd, and she talked about, you know, the definition of joy being grace recognized. And mm -hmm. as you were talking, it was just reminding me of that statement of taking time to recognize these moments yes. of stop, pause, and not just see it, but celebrate it. Yes. I think that that's, be and then you talked about Chick-fil-A, which I mean, it just, it went to all new levels because yeah. Chick-fil-A should always be celebrated. <laughs> yes, I agree. <laughs> I think another thing about recognizing those, those moments is it takes some effort to reframe our mentality around our circumstances. We could choose to say, well, I wanted to have a fun day out, but I'm just not feeling good enough to go out and this is so bad. Like we could say it that way. Or we could say, 
even though I didn't feel well enough to go into the restaurant, I was able to sit outside and we watched a show on our phone and we had a great little date and it was fun. So I think reframing and in that, choosing to recognize the grace in those moments. Mm. No, I just think it's so, it's such a beautiful thing to see someone walk through, yes, the hardship of it, but then to be so intentional about cultivating the joy in that, like, right. hey, let's not miss these things. So I can see absolutely in talking to you why someone would nominate you who watches your videos, oh. who follows your life. Um, <laughs> Cause it inspires people. And I don't mean that in like a fluffy, sometimes I think that word gets a little like fluffy, but yeah, it inspires people who like myself, I don't face chronic illness, but I, it reminds me every day, whatever it is that I'm battling against that, that I also am called to live this life intentionally and to find right. joy in things. Mm -hmm. And and sometimes just remembering that there are other people in this journey facing hard things that are doing the same thing. It's encouraging and it pushes me into my own, like every single day, how am I celebrating the small things? Right. Like, I think it's awesome. So tell me if you are speaking to someone who's walking, maybe it's not a CF journey, but a similar <clears throat> journey, they're facing <clears throat> this you know, really a battle every day where maybe right. like what you said, the things that may seem mundane to other people are, would be big victories for them. Right. What would you want to say to encourage that person today? If you could sit down with them across a show on your phone and Chick-fil-A in the car. Nice. I think focusing on Jesus fulfilling his purpose in us in the midst, not in spite of our circumstances. Hmm. Psalm 57 says, I cry out to God, most high God who fulfills his purposes for me. And God used that when I was sitting on the beach, when I was in high school, when I was supposed to be teaching a bunch of kids in the inner city about Jesus and I was on IV antibiotics, something went wrong with the IVs and I couldn't go teach. I thought, but I'm supposed to be teaching right now. And mm. I couldn't. And God said, I will fulfill my purpose in you. Mm. And I think focusing our minds and our hearts on the confidence that Jesus walks with us and fulfills his purpose for us and almost always that looks different than we thought. Mm. Being content in that and confident in that and then saying, okay, this looks very different than I thought. So what are you calling me to do today? Mm. And sometimes that is texting a friend who's going through a hard time because that's what you can do from your bed or whatever your challenge is facing, right? I guess just getting creative and asking God, what are you calling me to? Hmm. And how, how is he going to bring encouragement to you today? And it's not easy. And I, I think, you know, you and I recognize that it's not about ignoring or not acknowledging the hard, but acknowledging the hard and then choosing to find the grace and the joy in the midst of it. That's such an encouraging word. And I think that's, it's good for all of us to remember whether it's chronic illness, whether it's sometimes we're just in a season of yes. wrestling. I love that question of like, okay, God, what today? Like yeah. in, in the reality of my today, like it could be as simple as you got the flu and you thought you were supposed to go on a trip, like okay, exactly God, in the midst of this. And I think it's, it's beautiful. It also it comes back to that holding everything loosely. Like, God, I just, I want to, I want to go where you lead. I want to be sensitive to what you're doing. I joked one time that for a long time, I kept feeling like God kept coming out of left field, that whole term of like, where you don't yeah. expect. It was like, and it was like this, you know, I don't know why it took me so long to realize, I think God lives in left field. <laughs> like, <laughs> like I'm facing this direction and God's over here. Like, you don't even know. You don't even know why. Yeah. And it's not about trickery or like trying to knock us off kilter, but this, 
kind of acknowledging that God, you have things so much greater than we could ask or imagine. And how do we stay hands open to what that looks like? And like you said, when it doesn't show up the way that we thought it would or should, or however you want to frame it, God help me to just keep coming back to you. I think Amen. That's awesome. <laughs> so Mary, I have gotten to ask you so many questions and you've been amazing, but I'm going to flip the script here because one of the things that we're, we're doing in this season, which has been quite a stretching thing for me, is letting the guests <laughs> ask the final question. Oh so boy. Mary, of all of the things you would like to ask, I'm, I'm going to give you one solid question. I promise to answer to the best of my ability that will not put me into prison. Um, <laughs> what would you like to know? I am curious, before this interview, had you ever heard of CF? And if so, what did you know about it? And you're allowed to say that you've never heard of it. That's fine too. A lot of people haven't. No, that's actually a really good question. I have heard of it. And the reason I have heard of it is because a not super close friend, but a friend and acquaintance, they found out that their daughter had CF. Okay. And so I have seen, I would call it from a distance because again Mm -hmm. of social media and everything else, a little bit of what that has looked like in terms of challenges. Now, partly because I'm not super close to them and partly because they're just kind of entering this world, I haven't necessarily felt the openness to like ask a thousand million questions. Right. But it was really helpful hearing you talk about because even you sharing about your journey makes what I've been kind of seeing in their journey just like light bulbs go, oh, this Ooh. makes so much sense in terms of what they're walking through. Right. So yeah, I've heard of it. It's not been something super close that I've known a lot of detail. And right. so this was really incredibly helpful for to me. But also as you were talking, I just kept thinking about them and like. I don't know whether or not they listen or the wife listens or the mom or whatever, but I'm like, man, I really hope listeners that there are people that this can be an encouragement like it. Cause I know right. that for them, it was, they faced a diagnosis of something that they, it was almost like they had to learn about something because right. they faced the diagnosis. Yeah. Um, Which was true for my parents as well. Yeah. And I can, yeah. I just remember I feel like more and more I'm hearing these things that parent, mainly through parents of their kids walking through illnesses or things that Mm -hmm. they're like, I didn't even know this existed. And now this is our reality. This is what we're walking through. And so I, I really pray and hope, I think I was thinking of these parents and if they could hear your story and maybe they will (sighs) is how encouraging it would be for them to hear you at 30 talk about Mm. how God has used this as they look at their small, their little girl and wonder, how is God going to use this? So I just think it's kind of a neat, like, and just here, I mean, your testimony of God showing you in his word and reminding you that this is not in spite of this, like in the midst of this. Right. So as Amen. I'm talking, I'm like, I just need to send it to them. I don't know why I'm asking. I'm like, well, like, I'll be like, here, this is for you. <laughs> oh. Well, Mary, thank you so much for giving your time today, for sharing your story. Um, it's been so incredible. I, so I don't do a lot of YouTube. My kids are big YouTubers. But now that you've shared, I'm definitely going on YouTube and I'm going to look up the oh. videos because I think it'd be so fun to watch. And I know our listeners too. Um, where can they find you? If they're okay. looking up. We're on YouTube, The Fry Life, like my last name, F-R-E-Y, The Fry Life. On Instagram, I'm Fry Living. Um, Instagram has been a fun place. We call it my tiny blog because I write a little tiny blog caption for my pictures. And sometimes it's really deep and sometimes it's really not. Um, the video of me feeding the camel is definitely on there. Love and it. yeah. So mostly YouTube and Instagram. Awesome. And are you still doing videos every day? We are. That is incredibly impressive. 
I'm trying to think of anything. <laughs> I'm trying to remember to like, I don't know, brush my hair every single day. <laughs> well, I am excited. Can't wait to see. Check it out. I'll show my kids. I think it'll be really fun. And this has been going on for you. There's a lot of videos to catch up on. I mean, some people say, I watched all your videos last night. And I'm like, well, that's not physically possible, <laughs> but thanks for the sentiment. How do you feel about people binge watching your life? <laughs> <laughs> I walked over to my neighbor's house across the street to say hi. She was watching my videos and she was sitting there crying. It was so sweet. She was like feeling so moved by them. And it's really, I, I'm just honestly really humbled that people in real life would watch these and, and want to follow our journey. Well, I'm not surprised, but I, I'm so glad that you guys have taken this step and excited for people to get to know you more. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. Have I mentioned how much I stinking love nominated guests? Seriously why it took us two full seasons to even think of this idea, I have no idea. And what were we doing before nominated guests? Guys, do you just love Mary? Okay, here's the deal. I know some of you may have already even paused the episode to go find these things, but if you didn't, you need to get on this. Go on your Instagram look up Fry Living. So Fry is F-R-E-Y. So Fry Living, check it out. Go to their vlog, The Fry Life. Again, Fry is F-R-E-Y and start watching those videos. Um, now, if you're like me, you're wicked far behind. So this is probably going to be a bit of a binge sesh, <laughs> but I'm telling you, you are going to wonder, um, what was I doing before I knew this existed? Because Mary and her husband, Peter, they are the sweetest. I love, oh my gosh, I'm a little, a little obsessed with her dog, Oliver. He's so cute. And their videos are fantastic. Y'all, we need more of this in our life. People that we can be encouraged by and constantly just pointed back to Jesus, even through ups, downs, all, all the things in life. And I love Mary's story is not an easy story. Cystic fibrosis. I'm so grateful to have the opportunity to sit and hear her share this testimony and also just to learn more about this. Cause as you could tell in the interview, like I knew very, very little, and I felt like this just opened my eyes and helps me be more understanding to people who are walking through hard things like this. And the way that Mary walks out her faith in good days and in difficult days, I just love the honesty and the realness in their videos, how they are, how they show up online. I think it's such a huge ministry and testimony and platform that God's given them. Man, She's literally the epitome example of what this looks like to run your race in your place exactly where God has you. And so I hope that this story has inspired you today. I hope you like come out of it just ready to get into your race, whatever that looks like. And so listeners, whoever you are, wherever you are, just know that we continue to pray for you and cheer you on as you run your race in your place and keep following after Jesus. Thank you.